This guy says he's from immigration and he wants to see all of our paperwork. This is the first time it's happened. We've had some pretty bad luck with our accommodation here in Varkla. Right, well, our Varkla experience so far has been a friggin' disaster. I'm trying to put it into words, really, but it's far beyond that. You know the state between awaking and sleeping? I was there. I could feel the vibrations going all the way through my body. That sounds like an out-of-body experience, though. <laughs> We're going on a bit of a road trip this morning to somewhere absolutely mind-blowing. Welcome back to the channel. We're Janine and Liam Day, a married couple traveling through India in our little rickshaw named Pete. We're heading from the south of India to the north, taking on all the challenges and adventures along the way. So far, we have traveled through the South Indian state of Tamil Nadu, all the way to Kerala. And after some time in the tourist hotspot of Kovalam, addressing some serious issues with our rickshaw, we decided to leave and head north to one of India's biggest backpacker hangout places. But along the way, we encountered many problems, including being stopped by immigration along the road. Wish us luck as we tackle another Indian road trip in our little rickshaw named Pete. Good morning and welcome back to the channel. So, a lot has happened since we last saw you. The last video that we did was in Kovalam, the very, very touristy South Carolyn beach resort town of Kovalam. We had a great time there. We fulfilled um, a mission that's been going on for 15 years from Janine's dad. If you haven't seen that video, go watch it, but really, really good. From that point onwards, we moved on to the second, probably most popular uh, touristy beach resort town called Varkala. The journey there took about two and a half hours. It was very, very nice. There's a huge highway that goes from Kovalam all the way up to Fort Kochi, which is sort of like the second big city in Kerala. But we managed to come off that highway and go through some little seaside-y sort of uh, fishing towns, and it was beautiful. Obviously, the stretch of beach isn't just cornered to Kovalam and this next place we're going to. The beaches go all the way along, and it's really interesting to see the working towns and how they go about brightly beautiful colored houses all the way along. Kerala is so different to the rest of India. They all seem to have really, really nice houses, all different colors. And it's obviously a communist state. I don't know what that means so much with regards to people, but it's referred to as a communist state and maybe communist leaders or communist ideals within the politics and the government. Anyway, that's one side. We journey, journeyed fully north and had a great time doing it. Everything was going really, really well until we got to our destination. Remember, it's always 32 degrees here, so it's really, really hot, sometimes often humid as well. And when we got to our town, now I knew that Varkala was very heavily sought after with regards to tourism. So I booked ahead. I, once again, I've done another room where I booked ahead because I knew, and it's a Saturday night, and I knew it was gonna be really, really busy. So I booked ahead, booked this room with a balcony so we can do some yoga and stuff that we practice in the ashram uh, that we've left about a week ago now. And arrived at our destination in the afternoon and the place was fully booked, even though I'd previously booked it. Obviously didn't put any money down, did it all on the phone, secured it, sent a message, doubly secured it, everything was okay until we turned up and they turned around and said sorry but we're sold out and I said oh, okay well the whole of Varkala seems to be pretty full and there's nothing that they could do unfortunately this is one of the things in tourist towns outside of tourist towns it might not be the same but in tourist towns right now they seem to be very very busy including Koval and Varkala god knows what goers like I uh, will find that out later on. So, bad news entailed. I was a little bit sort of tired from driving because it does tire you out driving that rickshaw. We decided to go, I went onto booking.com and found another place. Not our usual sort of place. It cost a lot more money than the first place. So the first place that I booked was quite last minute, but I still booked it a couple of days in advance. That cost 2,500 rupees and it was okay for that. Compared to the rest of India, it was very expensive, but whatever, you just have to do what you do when at the time that you do it. The next place that we went to, it looked on booking.com like a bit like a hotel resort type place with sea view balcony. That would cost us 3,200 rupees, which is 32 pounds back home in the UK. But sea view balcony, just for one night, I thought, get the weekend over and done with, and then we might be able to move on to cheaper accommodation. Arrived there and there was no sea view balcony on there, yet they were charging the price for a sea view balcony. Of course, this just seems quite unfair, so we got the hell out of there as well, got our money back or what I put booked through on booking.com. Then, so that was two places that we went to with no goes. It was sort of looking really, really slim. So we drove outside of Arkla, pulled up on the side of the road in the intense heat, it gets hotter as the day goes on and tried to find somewhere 
where we could stay for the night, just anywhere it was getting to be this, this time now, but nothing too extortionately priced. Unfortunately, what it looks like, there's a lot of places in Varkla that aren't that nice, but because they know that there's so much demand for properties, they charge a lot of money anyway. And you don't want to get caught in that trap because you're just giving money to sort of ch people who are cheating a little bit, cheating the system, or at least we don't anyway. Pulled on the side of the road, sort of starting to get stuck between a rock and a hard place, and then really trying to find anywhere and a car pulls up next to us on the side of the road in the middle of nowhere almost. And this man gets out of the car and comes walking towards us. Who is he? We, we didn't get done by immigration, but immigration sort of caught up with us. We stand out like a sore thumb. Two white people driving the most brightly colored rickshaw in the whole of India. We knew that we stand out, but we thought it's not a problem because we're not doing anything wrong. Anyway, this guy says he's from immigration and he wants to see all of our paperwork. This is the first time it's happened. So a bit sort of disgruntled, but wanting to go along with it just so we didn't get into any trouble. I had the papers, some papers at hand. Now, remember, this is India and the paperwork is ridiculous for anything with legalities, authorities involved. So it's crazy. Remember, if you're gonna do anything crazy like this or buy a vehicle in India, get someone to do it for you, please. So show them all this document. He still couldn't understand what two tourists were doing driving an Indian vehicle. He just couldn't understand it. He was asking us lots of questions. He then wanted to see our passports and visas. And so we handed them over. That was the point where we asked him, if we wanted to see his ID. It seemed legit. He worked for the government. He was in the immigration and he he was just asking a lot of questions. We were saying to him, this is going on for quite a while, all this questioning on the side of the road. We were saying to him, I do apologize, but the more time that we're spending uh, talking to you, the less accommodation there is in Varkla. There seem to be very, very few left and they're going quickly. You know how the last few rooms in a, in a town would go really, really quickly in a touristy town? That's what was happening. Anyway, we gave him so much details, the people we bought it off, the, you know, everything about us that we were doing. He even wanted our YouTube channel and everything. And he then went off and on his way. When he left, we sort of, I, Janine found one place on Agoda, which is a bit like booking.com if you don't know it. And so we went on Agoda, booked this place, they took the money from us, and I thought, brilliant, we're in, done. Another 2,500 rupee place, which is 25 pounds a night. One night, no worries. So we drove all the way there, we arrived and the people at the, this sort of resort looked quite uh, shocked when we pulled in and they said, everything okay? And I said, yeah, we just, we've booked a room for tonight. And they said, well, no, we're fully booked. You can't, you, there's no rooms for you. And I said, but you've taken the money from me. And they said, well, you're gonna have to contact Agoda because there isn't. I ring up Agoda, Agoda say it's their responsibility. They've got to uh, honor the room agreement. It's not just giving money back, they've got to honor the room agreement. Anyway, these two people didn't want to give money for anything because they didn't have the money from Agoda. Agoda were sort of confusing the situation a bit and they said you've got to wait another, I think it was half an hour, ended up being like 45 minutes to an hour, on the side of a road waiting for a call back from Agoda because I thought that they would actually be calling to, they said that they're going to honor the room, which means that they're going to find us another room. They did say that. They called back and they said they can't find us another room in Varkala. I was a bit peed off by this. Uh, I'm, ne I'm never normally, I'm not peed off with sort of the people who own these guest houses, but big company like Agoda. Uh, they kept us waiting for such a long time when accommodation was getting less. We'd spent the whole day on the road by this point and it was so hot. We were drenched in sweat, sticky, hungry. We'd not eaten it was, uh, for the whole day as well. Uh, it was quite, it was, a, it was a nightmare to be honest with you, it was a proper nightmare. Anyway, I kept on talking to them and said how disappointed we were with the situation and that we can't get accommodation now. Everywhere in Varkala seems to be full. And they said all that they can do is give us a, the voucher, a voucher for the price that we paid on the room. So they refunded the money back that we paid for the original room, that they couldn't supply the room for us for, and they gave us that money on top of it in vouchers. So. Honestly thinking that we would have to go and find, go to another town and find that, which is a bit disappointing because we made it this far. Anyway, Janine's uh, last ditch attempt whilst the sun was going down was to say, just go and have a walk around and see if you can just see something. This is obviously the way the backpacking used to be done. Now it's all done online. I went for a walk around, tried a few different places, all saying no, fully booked. The very, very last place was called, was a surf place. Now, Varkla is trying to come up as a surfing destination. And lo and behold, they said, we've got a room. So they had a room for 2,500, which is what we, we seem to be paying for every single room in the first place. The rooms are quite spacious and nice. It's, good, it's, new, it's a new building. The people were incredible uh, who worked there. There was some really nice music playing in the background. Felt instantly chilled and relaxed. Gave Janine the good news and in we went. It was a weight off our shoulders. Honestly, India can tire you the out. It really, really can. 
it's such a tiring play sometimes. And I literally came in and I think both of us could have slept and the, you know, it's sun going down. We could have slept at that point, but we hadn't eaten all day. Put our bags down, went out to a neighboring restaurant, which, you know, a bit of good luck, happened to be a vegan restaurant, as you know, that us two are vegan. Um, it, so we sat there and ate some sort of Western type food, although mine was a pad thai and Janine had a tofu burger. Not everyone's cup of tea, but for us, that's great. It did cost a fortune, well, not a fortune, by Indian standards, it cost quite a bit of money, 400 rupees per plate, but we were so happy to be eating food and chilling in a nice environment. The idea was then was to go to bed, fall asleep, wake up the next day, change accommodation, and I'd actually managed to find that evening something that was available the next day that was half the price. And we're gonna be heading there really, really soon. But before we do, we've got something else on. So off we went. It was a new day in India and anything could happen. We're gonna be heading now as a treat to ourselves to go and get some sound healing therapy. I mean, you've never heard of that before. I mean, we'll be, I'll be able to explain more about it afterwards. It's gonna be the first time that Janine and I have ever done this. I don't know if you remember, but we tried to do it in Auroville, Auroville in Tamil Nadu, but it was fully booked. Um, just so happens that just around the corner from this guest house, they do it. So I booked Janine and I in for single sessions bright and early this morning. So we're gonna head off to some fat sound therapy. Who knows what's gonna happen in there? I've got no idea. Uh, I ju it just sounds awesome. From the people that said that they've done it before, it sounds very, very powerful, very, very good. I'll let you know how it is afterwards. Not really knowing what we are getting ourselves into, we walked along the cliff edge to an alternative therapy workshop and store. Liam was first up, so headed in to experience with an open mind what sound therapy healing is all about. Janine and I had two completely different experiences because we are so different to each other. There's so many big Tibetan bowls in there, massive ones. And there's one placed on your chest as well. And uh, he gongs them on, at different times. And each Tibetan bowl is, has the same sort of sound frequency as the different chakras in the body. This one thing that was always going was this uh, heart Tibetan bowl, one placed right on your chest and it continued for a whole hour. Rather than being your favorite music, it was probably the most soothing music you could ever listen to. The sound was so much that it was physical and it was going through all of your body so you could feel your whole body sort of tingling, like a, a warm blanket made out of vibrations, if you, if you will. I'm trying to put it into words really, but it's far beyond that. You know the state between awaking and sleeping, I was there, so I was having lots of sort of visuals mixed with kaleidoscopic uh, visuals as well, vibration sort of pictures. Some of the visuals from the past but when it, all i can say is when you walk out of there and you're walking when we went i went walking to go and swap sessions with janine i was a little bit wobbly on feet because i was so relaxed in there and then i just sat and had a cup of tea and tried to sort of uh not analyze but reflect on what just happened and it was just a really nice day no, not many thoughts came into my head and that was what's really nice about it almost like a meditative state um something that people probably uh spend um quite a long time trying to get to that state through meditation so i really recommend it because it's so good and, and imagine doing that every single week I, I think it would be so good for you and uh it's just a nice place to be right now my head's a nice place to be my body's a nice place to be ah and i can just hear the waves beautiful well liam's just a big hippie isn't he <laughs> Yeah, so I um, I struggled a little bit. It was still really good though. So he puts the bowl on your chest, lots of other bowls around you, and they're donging. How can you not like that anyway? Just even in the first instance, it was really nice. It was really dark in there. I closed my eyes and I could feel the vibrations going all the way through my body to the point that I didn't know. At one point, I didn't know if my hands were facing up or facing down. So. I, it was just like your kind of hands go a little bit like numb and you, you're not quite sure what's going on so it was really nice that sounds like an out-of-body experience 
Maybe I'm more hippie. Than yeah, you were. <laughs> Probably it sounds like you had a very profound experience in there without even knowing about it. Sorry, I just. But he said my chakras were blocked, and mentally, what what goes on with me mentally is that I'm very active in my mind. All things like this, I struggle to relax fully so I didn't get the same experience as Liam but either way I found it really nice and relaxing and I would 100% do it again because I felt by the end of it I felt like I was starting to relax my mind was starting to relax a lot more so I think if I did it again maybe I, my mind would be a little bit more relaxed earlier on and then I'd get more out of it. We headed off stroking the cutest dog on the way to go for breakfast and a cup of tea. The cafe we went to sells the most amazing smoothie bowls and masala chai with soya milk. We sat and ate overlooking the sea from the cliffs before heading back to our room as we had to check out. Okay, so we're back at our accommodation now. We are about to grab our stuff and head over to our next accommodation. Um, I am feeling a little nervous as we've had some pretty bad luck with our accommodation here in Varkla, but fingers crossed it's all gonna be okay. So let's go. As we're gearing ourselves up to leave, something unexpected happens. Okay, we're in reception of this hotel where we're staying at the moment, and there may be a little accommodation twist. Just as we're checking out, <laughs> there seems to be quite a few people have checked out and they've obviously seen we've got a camera. It's a really nice place. The, the, the room we stayed in last night was in a big building. This what there's actually really beautiful bungalows all around the outside of this building. Mm -hmm. And uh, they have said that potentially we could stay there for a discount if we give them a little plug. Um, but it's somewhere that we'd be happy to give a plug anyway because it's so beautiful. And they've only op been open a month and they're setting themselves up as a bit of a surf retreat um, in, in Varkala. So uh, we might take that. Um, we might <laughs> take that exchange. They're really nice. <laughs> they're really nice. We're going to go and check them out now anyway. I cannot see the things I saw when I first met. This is like a showroom for it, for it all. But there, it's a massive bed, lots of room, nice uh, bathroom, and they've got a kitchen and a corner unit. Kitchen and corner unit. And a beautiful balcony. It's, um, it's beautiful. <laughs> it's beautiful. We'd be crazy to move on. We'd be crazy to move on. We would be. Where we were gonna move on to is um, nowhere near as good as this. Nowhere near as good as it. <laughs> I didn't book it. I just, just said asked on the phone and his availability. So I think if we can stay here, we'll stay here. <gasps> oh my God, I'm so pleased. What was an absolute disaster has turned into, uh, what's the opposite of disaster? Uh, pure bloody brilliance. <laughs> pure bliss yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and brilliance. Fantastic fortune. Yeah, it's just excellent. So we're gonna move into our new accommodation in about half an hour. I'm so happy. We checked out of our old room, which we had to leave due to a booking and moved into our brand new swanky lodge with a balcony. This hotel has recently opened as a surf retreat, offering days out catching waves with surf lessons too. Our new accommodation is beautiful and airy with lots of space, a big bed, a nice bathroom and a balcony set in a gorgeous garden. The staff here are really nice too, creating a friendly and cheerful vibe. Right, well, our Varkala experience so far has been a friggin' disaster. Until today, waking up and going for that sound meditation this morning, and then these guys upgrading us. Honestly, it's like India, I keep saying it as well, there's something deeply integrated into an Indian experience, and it's always got some sort of lessons and magic and wonderfulness. Yesterday, all of that bad luck led us to a point where we've now been upgraded to a room, the best room we've had in India so far, and it's a delight. And you know what? We might even stay for a couple of days and just chill because we've just take the opportunity, take the sign. Anyway, full of spirits, full of joy, full of excitement, full of energy. We are going now to go and see what Varkla finally is all about. Let's go and look at Varkla and get an idea of the place. Varkla is one of the most popular tourist towns, not only in Kerala, but in the whole of India. Westerners and Indian tourists flock here for calm waters, golden sand beaches, yoga and partying. It's the only place in the whole of Kerala where the hills run close to the sea, creating a cliff top community full of guest houses, resorts, shops, cafes and restaurants. And of course, a stunning beach at the bottom to make it an ideal holiday spot. So yeah, so Varkla is basically as we're walking along, shop, cafe, restaurant, shop, cafe, restaurant. And then between those you get maybe a massage place and a sound therapy, a sound healing thing. There's a yoga class uh, every 50 yards or something similar to that, meditation, 
all that sort of thing bar restaurant that sort of thing it's just a continuation all on this cliff so as it's such a shopping eve type place which is janine's favorite pastime she's got a little shopping list that she wants an esoteric shopping list shall we say ever since that they said to her this morning that she needs to she's got blocked chakras we've been referring back to the stuff that we learned at the ashram if you missed that we stayed at an ashram for a week just recently in kerala and it was amazing and they have some techniques and stuff for unblocking the chakras but we need some tools to to do it and that is what we're after Janine's shopping trip's not going very well. She's gonna get very annoyed about that. I've seen her. I've seen her when she doesn't buy stuff and she, she gets annoyed. <laughs> I'm only joking. Those momos have really given me a hankering for some food. So we're gonna go and see if we can find something a little bit cheaper than what we found so far. We headed along the cliffs and found a restaurant called Otapura offering some local favorites. Feeling hungry, Liam ordered the Gobi Burriti and I ordered probably the best biryani I've had here so far in India. It was amazing. We sat and ate until sunset and finished off our day with a couple of drinks in the music bar, which was surprisingly busy with lots of people enjoying food, drink and a live Bollywood band night. It was a fun and exciting end to an eventful day here in Varkla. Good morning everyone. We are in this lovely accommodation. We're actually filling up Pete now with some petrol because we're going on a bit of a road trip this morning to somewhere absolutely mind-blowing. So it looks on the pictures anyway. I'm so excited to go and show you guys this really strange, amazing thing that we're about to see. So once we've topped up, we will hit the road and go. Also, there's a bit of a twist in this story, which we're about to show you now. Don't tell me that you've never wanted to see the world's largest bird statue before. You, you, you do, don't you? That, I'm sure that's what all the comments have been saying. Please, please, please don't leave India without seeing the world's largest bird structure. Well, we've answered you. We're going to go there right now because you know it's India and you can't leave India without seeing the world's largest bird structure. We've arrived at, what's it called again? Jata Jatay Earth Centre. Jatayu. We're at Jatayu. And it is the world's largest bird monument. But it's not just that. There's a huge, deep um, meaning and reason why there's a bird on top of this hill. But what's even more interesting is, behind us here is Kerry. And Kerry is the hitchhiker that we didn't take, we didn't hitchhike. We didn't take to the, uh, the ashram, if you remember a couple of videos back. And as a huge twist of fate, we saw her in uh, Varkla and, we, and of course we invited her to Jatayu because we sort of owe her karmically to, to, to take her on, on a trip of some sort safely there and back. So um, it's such a nice thing to be able to fulfill that and uh, clear the karmic debt. <laughs> and, uh, and we're all going to go up and see this huge um, eagle on top of this hill now. Oh my God. Okay, so we are headed to a cable car. Firstly, I don't really like cable cars um, because I don't like heights. But I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it anyway. It's not really that high. Um, secondly, they've just taken my drone off me so I can't fly the drone. 
so I'm really gutted. So in India, they seem to be really strict on drones. You can't really fly over a certain height, 15 meters. You end up going to a lot of places and they say you can't fly the drone. I don't know why, because this is such a big open space. I thought we'd really get away with it and I'd get some really good shots of this eagle. But no, unfortunately not. So I'm gonna do my best and enjoy it anyway, because it's an amazing sight. Security was extremely tight here for this attraction. Going through what seemed like customs, security checks, and even an airport lounge. We tried some of the lounge food, pickled gooseberries, which were an acquired taste. Onwards and upwards, we caught the cable car to the top to see the eagle. Wow, that's incredible. We're talking like, we're just at the head. The, the <laughs> It's a vulture or an eagle? But we're, we're just at the head and the head itself is huge. The talons are huge. Uh, and we're just at one end of it. It's, yeah. It is pretty magnificent. It's a, magnificent. Okay, wow, so the more we um, get closer to this sculpture and actually be in this place, the more we learn about it. And it's actually really, really interesting and cool. So, the mythology behind this statue, I'm gonna read this out because because I just won't get it right if I don't. Um, so, this is the story. The Rakshisha Ravana. The Rakshasha Ravana was abducting the avatar of Lakshmi, Sita, when Jatayu tried to rescue her. Jatayu fought valiantly with Ravana, but as Jatayu was very old, Ravana soon defeated him, clipping his wings and Jatayu descended upon the earth. So this eagle is supposed to be uh, Jatayu, it is Jatayu, who's actually came here to die after having his wings clipped or something like that. Um, so that's the story behind it. And Jatayu was saving Sita, protecting Sita, who is a, a woman. And this whole place is dedicated to women's safety and honor. So we noticed as we were coming up that all of the staff here, all of the security and every, everyone, they're all women. And I think that's really, really cool. I really like that and I'm so pleased that we've come up here and that we can explain this story to everyone as well. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you like the content, please don't forget to subscribe and we will see you next time as we move further north through incredible India. Found what we're looking for in life